Thank you for listening to PoliticalStorm.com. I'm John Small. I'm Heidi Small. Hey, you're, you're diving right in today, huh? I am today. I was going to introduce you. This is my wife, Heidi. Uh, we do a radio program together every day, and I've been doing this podcast on my own for the most part, and then I've tried to convince her to join me here. It's really cool because this morning she has some great stuff to contribute. I'm going to start with this. Reuters headline, Trump catches up to Clinton. Latest Reuters Ipsos poll finds... According to this, uh, right now, Trump is a little bit ahead, which is not a bad thing. Um, Funny thing is, this morning I was watching, again, CNN, Fox News, flipping back and forth. Does that drive you crazy when I do that? Yeah, it does. You don't like that at all, do you? No. No, I I do not. I found out we have picture in picture, so I can watch both at the same time. And then when they start talking about something I'm not interested in, I switch over to the other. But it was fascinating that uh, Fox News was not making a real big deal of that, but but, uh, CNN was making a big deal. And it was the way they were talking about it, I thought was interesting, though, because they're kind of almost like downplaying the fact that, well, you know, Trump caught up, but they were kind of expecting this after the the bump from the Democratic National Committee wore off. So, Mm -hmm. you know, this is kind of what they were expecting. This is what we were expecting. I don't think that's what I don't think that's what they were expecting. So I I just think it's interesting that, uh, again, over the weekend, a lot of things. I think they probably were expecting it after the bump from. Uh, all of the scandals well, finally now coming to light, the truth behind a lot of things. I think they probably, yeah, her her numbers are going to tank. And it's interesting. I was watching a program where the, the I, I really wish that I could have been the interviewer in this interview where they were talking to a Democratic uh, strategic planner or whatever these people are called, somebody that's, you know, helping the Clinton campaign. And they brought up this this interviewer brought up the, you know, the emails and the servers and the issue. And this person kind of got huffy. They, they said, you know, I just don't understand why that's even an issue. They they've been trying to make this an issue, but it's really a non issue. Uh, she's been found innocent and there was no nothing that was done wrong. There's no smoking gun. If I were that person asking the questions, I would have said, you're right, there's no smoking gun because they smashed the blackberries with hammers. Yeah. I mean, that alone, That alone tells you there's some, <laughs> some wrongdoing. If they had to destroy them. Smashing blackberries with hammers is not something that most people have no. on their to-do list for any no. reason ever. Not at all. So why would you do that? Why would you... Because they had something to hide. That's why they did that. You know, your hard drive, not just wiped clean, but bleached, digitally bleached, whatever that means. I don't even know what that means. But they, they wanted whatever was on that hard drive, you know, the yoga instructor emails and the Chelsea Clinton wedding emails. They really didn't want anybody reading those. Yeah. So... I think the average American is smart enough to realize that when somebody's smashing blackberries with hammers and bleaching their hard drive, they've got something to hide. Yeah. And it's not yoga instruction, and it's not, I don't care what they say, you know, because you can't believe a word they say. I used one device. No, turns out closer to 20 devices. And then here was the interesting thing. Their person, their apologist that was in the media was saying, but she used one device at a time is what she meant. Seriously, that's what she meant? No, she was saying, I only used one device. Everybody only uses one device at a time. I I was watching when this when this happened on I think we were on MSNBC I think is what I was watching. I've been flipping on a lot. And of um there was a panel of libs up there and and one guy saying, "Well, they smashed all the blackberries with hammers, so of course they couldn't have." And right away the the guy heading the debate says, uh, we're going to need to fact check that. There's no way. There's no way. Can you che- fact check that for me on the quick? Can you do that really quick? Fact check that. And then the person that he was talking to off screen said, came on screen, said they absolutely did smash them with hammers. That's been, <laughs> and the look on their faces was just priceless. They're all just sitting there. They were totally yeah. expecting her to come back and say, no, that no. didn't happen. They didn't smash all the blackberries. <laughs> Some of them they destroyed in blenders. <laughs> I made that up just now, so I don't want you to. But the that's look true. on their faces was just amazing they when they realized. Over, oh, they ran one no. over with a steamroller. Another one got microwaved. Some got dropped in toxic yeah, it's waste. Just, it's just no. really kind the, of become a joke. I, all of the things I just said, I'm literally just making up because that is just as ridiculous as smashing it with a hammer. This is a Clinton staffer that had to do that. That was his job for the day. 
That's so crazy. Uh, what is it you need me to do? And you take these blackberries, go out back and smash them with a hammer. <laughs> Do you possibly have something to hide, Mrs. Clinton? <laughs> Maybe one of those interns pulled a Lewinsky and kept one oh, of them. Oh, hey, there you go. That's they what I would have done. Did a quick change and smashed their own BlackBerry. Yeah, I would have kept. I would have kept one just so I had the evidence. And maybe that's what the guy that Julian Assange. Maybe he has one of those Blackberries Ooh, that she go. thinks has hey, been destroyed. Be that would we, be amazing. We should get back on target here because we started with this really simple idea for a podcast. <laughs> uh, you had some great news. Uh, I don't know if it's great news, but in in your world, great news. And in most people who listen to this podcast by now, I think we've pretty much whittled down to people who are. Probably not huge Clinton supporters at this point. If you're still hanging on and you're a Clinton supporter, more power to you, man. That's awesome. But uh, what is it that you read here? Uh, it just showed up on my Facebook news feed and it said, Trump could be the first in history to win all 50 states according to linguistic genius. So, so I don't know who that was. I read the story and it didn't really go into any details so much about... Now, there are, that, there's but, another map out that says Hillary Clinton has already won this thing, and we might as well just quit talking about it. So, you sure that this is correct, Heidi? I, I don't think any of them are correct. Oh, there's there's a, there's a guy uh, from the, what is it, Virginia University or somewhere. Uh, he always has a, a map, and according to his map, Hillary's already won this thing. We might as well quit talking about it and just get on with our lives. Mm-hmm. So, move on. Oh, yeah. I guess we haven't had a single debate yet. Uh, nobody's cast a single vote yet. But yeah. she's already won. I and mean, Hillary will won. not hold a press conference. That alone yeah. should have everybody seventy-two days three on days, both something. sides of the aisle saying there is something very, very, very wrong. Oh, today's the day. There, she had an interview over the weekend with somebody, ABC News, I believe. And today's the day that that interview is going to air. So okay, but an interview is one thing. Yeah, do a freaking press conference where the press has has time to just. Everybody, shoot questions Annihilate your way. Annihilate you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Well, and that's why oh, she won't do them. Here was the other thing that was interesting. And what does she think is going to happen in the debates? you think Trump's not going to no. go there? 26th, I believe, is the first debate. It's I can't up here wait. I'm going to make popcorn. We're, we're going to have a we're party. Got, we're definitely having a debate party. Uh, anybody that's listening, if you're in the neighborhood, come on over and join us. We would love that. That'd be awesome. Uh, here, here's the thing that's going to be really interesting, though. This morning on MSNBC, again, <laughs> I've been flipping those channels back and forth. Fox goes to commercial. I click over and start watching stuff that's leaning to the left. I want to know what they're saying over there. So on that channel this morning, there was a panelist that said, if Trump shows up, he will be deemed the winner. So all he has to do is show up to be deemed the winner. So they're trying to say, according to this panelist who was on MSNBC this morning, that everybody is so against Hillary and all he has to do is show up and he's going to be deemed the winner on this thing. Okay, wait a minute. I think that's exactly backwards. I think all she has to do is show up and maybe have a five-minute coughing fit like she had over the weekend during her interview. You know, somebody asked her a question. And <coughs> yeah. <laughs> she's either very very ill and doesn't want to admit just, it or she's like using ask. that for stalling any questions whatsoever that i don't want to answer because i got <clears throat> yeah need some water can i get some water anybody get some water i need some water i just think it's really interesting so the the very first debate will be coming up very very soon and we'll find out uh what happens i guess when it comes debate time who knows maybe we'll watch the debate and maybe i'll say I am sold on Hillary. I don't think that's I don't think happen. that's going to happen. Here's what I do. Honestly, I kind of wish that Jill Stein and Gary Johnson had a seat at the table too. Even if it was just for one. I mean, just for one debate. Because those those four will be on uh, in all 50 states, at least 3 of them, and I think Jill Stein is on most states. It would be really nice to at least give those two a platform. Because there are some people that say I want to vote for the first female president. Jill Stein's a female too. So, you know, if, if that's what you're, if you're just saying, I want to vote for a female, there you go. I saw her on uh, TV over the weekend. She, she's a little crazy, I think. Uh, she's not gotten a lot of political media coverage. And she was on Fox News Sunday. And when he would ask questions, she would just keep talking and he tried to interrupt her. It was very awkward for him. I could tell that he was, he was like, okay, we're going to just move on. So, But uh, maybe this is why you haven't got much media coverage. You don't huh. know how this works. I ask questions, you answer the question, then you shut up and let me ask another question. That's kind of how it works. I'm not very familiar Have with her. I haven't even really checked into her at all. Uh, interesting ideas. You know, she's the green candidate, so everything is very much a green thing. And, and one of the things that I thought was really funny is, you know, she's talking about ending 
these wars and we need to bring all these troops home. And the guy asked, so what do you do about ISIS? And then she said, we need to end all wars and we need to bring these people home. And he's like, okay, but... But what do you do about ISIS? You're just going to let them roam free? Well, I really think that, you know, we need to end all the wars. Okay. Okay. How are you going to end that war? How are you going to end that? These are people that want to blow themselves up. Are you going to send them an email and say, we're ending the war. You need to quit now. You think that's going to work? That's not how it works. Right. So I understand. And uh, there's probably some Jill Stein people that just clicked off. But there is, you know, if, if you're a fan of her, you should be making a big stink right now about getting her in these debates. And the same thing with the Gary Johnson fans. I get emails from the Gary Johnson fans. I personally have nothing against Gary Johnson, uh, but when when I look at this race right now, here is my big concern. Yeah, I think this could very Gary Johnson could be Ross Perot. Yeah, I mean you had George Herbert Walker Bush running for re-election. No Democrat would run against him because he had, believe it or not, it's funny to think about this now, but he had the highest approval rating of any president. He did. In in 1988, he was elected, and you know, 92 it was time for re-election. He was going into the election with the highest approval rating of any president, even higher than Reagan. So nobody would run against him. So Bill Clinton was like, "I'll run against him. I'll do that." What the heck? So Ross Perot wasn't too fond of what was going on with with uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, and he said, "Well, I'll run against him." And he pulled enough Republican votes away that, that Bill Clinton, Clinton came in with. I believe, and I'll, you'll have to fact check me on this, but I believe he came in with the fewest votes. You know, more people voted against him than for him. I know that, but I believe he also came in with the fewest percentage of the vote of any president at the time. You know, so there were more people who voted against Bill Clinton than for, for Bill Clinton, but he he won because he had two Republican opponents. Yeah, and, and that's, that's my fear. That's what's going on with Gary Johnson. And I'm really afraid that, you know, there's going to be enough people to say, well, I can't support Trump, so I'm going to just throw my hat in the ring with Gary Johnson. Well, then you got two people that are splitting the vote on one side of the aisle, and then you got Hillary running into the White House on her own, even though the majority of Americans don't like her. I mean, if you look at the polls. Now, I'll also say the majority of Americans don't like Trump. And who knows what she'll steal when she leaves this next time. (laughs) We'd never get it back. I'm sure they only found a fraction of what she stole when she moved out the yeah, first they time. Left, they, they loaded up trucks full of stuff. And they had na- to return it. Na- but you know they didn't treasures. return everything. They've got national oh. treasures still at their house. They're criminals. <laughs> How do you really feel, Heidi? I just They just drive me crazy, John. I can't even believe it. These people who stole from the White House when they moved out are even being considered to be allowed back in there. Well, there you go. That's the, the country we The whole thing just baffles me. It does. But, you know... I can also say this. That's one of the things that makes our country great. That we have. A I would country. say that that is the exact opposite no. of what makes our country no. great. People are that stupid. But here's the thing. We have the freedom in this country. To let thieves live in the White House. That's but wonderful. You know what? There are places where they don't have that freedom. Where right. we have a dictator. And you know who's going to be in charge next? That person's son. Kim Jong-un. You know, it's going to be that family until something happens to change that. Mm-hmm. Remember Kim Jong Il, then Kim Jong Un, you know. So I'm I'm really glad that we don't live in a country where it's run by. I don't understand their names. <laughs> okay. Why do they have? Like, shouldn't their last name be the same? I think it's. I think they go by their last name first, and their first name last. I don't know. It's just bizarre. We, we may be pronouncing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> His real name is Kevin. <laughs> I have no clue. All right. It's time to say goodbye. <laughs> time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, that's going to do it for politicalstorm.com. Apparently, she has somewhere to go. So. To go. <laughs> My wife is leaving me. Is that bad? I think that's bad. All right. Uh, we'll be back with another great podcast tomorrow. By the way, uh, if you get a chance, be sure to sign up to be a contributor at politicalstorm.com. If you go to the website, politicalstorm.com, top right corner, you'll see a place on there where you can sign up to become a blogger. If you want to do a podcast like this, you can do that. If you want to do some videos, you can do that. But chime in. Your voice matters. It really does. You have a choice in this election, and you have a voice in this election at politicalstorm.com. I'm John Small.